돌아온 영웅들 리턴하지 Welcome back to the 2016 Hearthstone Kespa Cup with Valdez and Wolf. We're about to jump into the final game, final set here of Group B. And it all comes down to this, Chunsu versus Flurry. That it does. And this is going to be an exciting one as you have the round of four from the Hearthstone World Championship career representative and Flurry, the defending Masters Korea with uh, these guys facing each other. They're both the big favorites uh, by many's estimation to get out of the group. And now one of them will advance. And we've seen the majority of these decks already today. So I'm excited to see how these are going to clash in this ban phase, which we're going to check out. It all comes down to that. Is anyone going to have Shaman banned? Are they both going to first pick it? Do they have something else in store? We definitely saw that uh, Tung Su bring in that very aggressive warrior. It didn't really work out too well for him. I think he has one win and maybe two losses with that. So, uh, wouldn't be surprised to see it self banned if he wants to bring in something else, perhaps. We'll take a look. Shaman versus Rogue. And Shaman and Rogue, the respective classes banned. Self banned being the Druid for Chun Su. Not I'm a glad surprise. that we. We finally come that far, you know, that it's either Shaman or Rogue banned, and then if one of them is picked, or rather they're picked, and if one of them is picked, then the other gets banned. Yeah. The players kind of coming to the same conclusion that we did. Yeah, I think we're pretty spot on the money. Druid, though, coming out for Flurry could be a risk. I think when he uses it, it's going to be important. I think well, Druid can be very strong if you use it as your last when you're ahead in a series and you corner your opponent into a certain matchup, but if it's your last deck left and you're behind, as we saw, uh, well, especially for uh, Kai Zero because he had such a specific Druid deck, it's really hard, but it gets really rough to use these Druid decks in certain matchups, especially against heavy aggression. We'll see if it pays off for him, having that Druid flurry, but we're about to jump into the final match of the entire night. It's coming down to this. Just one best of five to decide who makes it on to the next stage. And as you said, the next stage is very important. So you get to bring new decks and more money on the line, more fame. So let's see who's going to take the lead here in game number one between Tunsu and Flirt. Warrior Mirror. These two. I think that's the first time. Or maybe like the second time we've had this. Yeah. Um, definitely it won't be the only counter often, especially the Shaman being so prevalent in the opening match. You don't normally see too many mirrors uh, after the opening, with some exceptions. And uh, I think that's this happens kind of because we have that alternate band with the Rogue and Shaman. Check out that. AK Racing, tilt in, back, nice leather chair. It's going to be the Nazoth, first mate. Patches, hook the face. And on the opposite side of things. It's a bit of a tougher turn. If you play the pirate now, you lose... Um, buff, you'll likely lose the pirate. If you don't play it, you use the axe, but you don't have a board. 
The opponent gets this free cultist buff. It's not as powerful as buffing a war axe. So it's kind of going to be inferior, but it gains value the longer you don't have another weapon, which is the case here for him, so that's why he uses it. It's good for trading, you know, more so than just face damage. You get three times to do two damage to anything that's on the board. Now, this upgrade play is so perfect. So you clear the cultist, gives him this huge buff on Blood Sail, and patches will allow him to trade with the 1-1. One -one. He does have Blood for Eager, so he's going to do that in trade. He's going to eat six damage happily. It's unfortunate to take six damage like this, but well worth it. And he still actually maintains a current health advantage. Now, Arcanite Reaper is coming down the pipeline. He would love to buff that if possible. He could but do that's it this a pipe turn. Dream. Well, he's going to puff this to Arcanite Reaper levels, which is yeah. basically an equivalent um, buff. You're really missing one set of damage there, if you think about comparatively. But you were one charge behind anyways, so kind of missing a small amount of damage. Uh, and buffing the Arcanite Reaper, like he says, a pipe dream, it's maybe impossible to occur. And this immediate upgrade is still very powerful. Could trade into the Cultist, and get uh, a 5-4 on his uh, Berserker, mm -hmm. but it will be cleared right afterwards. Still, I think a good option. He doesn't want a rusty hook, that's the awkwardness when you have two in his off first mate, because they, don't, they have anti-synergy with each other. You can only have one weapon at a time. Yeah. I think it's not a bad idea to trade into that, but trading to this is also pretty good. You get an extra two damage and leave that 2-2 on the board. And, you know, next turn, if he decides to trade the cultist into the 2-2, into the slime, then you can just trade it with your last charge of the hook. So, he's gonna go ahead and do that. And at the same time, though, this Berserker gets played out on the field here. The thing is, with the Berserker here, it's such a massive advantage for Chun Tzu. He has Mortal Strike, which if he takes a little bit more damage will be so valuable. He can use Arcanite Reaper as a clear <laughs> as a result. Um, I think he's just going to play this and then yeah. equip. He can clear this which puts him nearly at the 12 health. That uh, will give him the buff. He can do 6 damage to face. He has 5 damage available. He could have 12 if he takes any damage and the weapon remains and there's no taunts. He has Fierce Monkey, but if there were no taunts, he would have 12 to offer. As I say that, the Berserker still remains, so this may just simply yeah. be too much. Even if he taunts here, you just swing with the axe, take the damage, and then your Mortal Strike kills him off. Perfect. So that's going to be it. That's Quick game. game one. So, and it goes. That's all the damage he needed. Doesn't even matter what he draws. It's flying off the hook. Off the chain. He's trying to decide which way he wants to do it. Okay, there he goes. Now he's going to swing face, get a little bit of extra damage there. And that is going to be game number one, going to Tunsu. Very quick fashion. Easy peasy. He gets that early lead. And the mirror is so important. We've seen it time and time again. More move, Warrior for Chunsu. Leaving him with the Shaman and Warlock. But now is not the time to Druid. I'd say try to get a win on Shaman with the Warrior. We could see Warlock as a result now that Chunsu's been able to encounter Flurry's Warrior. And see a little bit uh, what it's about. See if he has his Warlock cards he can kind of counter with. Um, you know, he's running a very standard Reno. We'll see. There's arguments for both sides, the Shaman and the Warlock. Warlock is riskier, but if you win it, you're like in such good position. You have a Shaman to win one out of three games, and it's like you basically just win. As long as you don't get crazy bad draws. We'll see what he wants to do. If he's confident in that matchup, maybe he'll go for Warlock first. Jumping into game number two of Chun Tzu versus Blur.
the Shaman variation. Get out of that hand patch. Is how many times have I told you? Such a greedy pirate, man. Just going to keep the small time. At this tournament, small time should go full time. I mean, he's in almost every deck. He's... Well, this is his debut, you know? He's got to show off his stuff here in all of these games, and then maybe he'll get promoted by Blizzard. We're going to have to wait and see. That's what I'd like to see. I think he deserves it. We'll probably see double small time here into next turn Jade. He also has the patches. And oh boy, Flurry is not going to be happy with this. <laughs> the next turn he'll have the Jade claws. Fairy Dragon flies out of the hands, not because it's a fantastic play, but it's because only it's play. his only play. And Jade Claws easily just takes this out. And look at how much damage is on board now. Seven, turn two, eight for next turn. Once that Jade Golem is stopped sleeping. I don't want to call this game over, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, you know... This is the game, like, people that are trying to grind to Legend, the game starts off like this, and they just concede right away to save time. Like, just to call tongue. it, you know, like it is. Yeah. Flame Tongue is, is just adding insult to injury at this point. He's not going to use his claws because he wants to maintain the four extra damage. Mm -hmm. and oh, the worst draw. <laughs> he just drops out. There you go. And I don't blame him. That game was over. One of our yeah. fastest games in the tournament won in four turns. If you, if you, it's like, I don't know if it's just as strong as the old, uh, what was that, that Undertaker? The Undertaker Hunter? Yeah, yeah, with the with the death rattles. I don't know if it's as strong as that start, but it's pretty close. Yeah. When, when you get double small time with patches and then you have J-Claws next, it's an incredible amount of damage. Double Undertaker, board. next turn double uh, Lepronome, and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh. sorry. <laughs> Happy Feast of Wintervale! I remember those days. <laughs> well, this Both of the Undertakers are, are three fours. This is definitely a tough spot now to be in for Flurry. Yeah, and you know, maybe he could have put out Quirk and Elite, charge into the Totem, the Flame Tongue Totem, but there was just so much momentum going the way of Tunsu that it was going to be nearly impossible. So he just gives it away. He says, okay, you take this one. I got to focus on the net spats. Speaking of that, let's go into game number three right now. That's the Warlock or Chun Tzu to clear it out. Warlock, obviously, of the three, the toughest to win with. He even brings Corruption. I haven't seen that card since the like, first week I played the, the beta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, was like, oh, this card's not good. Know, it was one of the first cards. And I wonder why. I don't even know. Maybe it, it's for, like, some of the Aviana stuff. Maybe it's a tech card. I don't know. Well, it's definitely got to be for something specific. He's not just like, yeah, I think this is a good card now. And it must be the decks that he's facing. Might Oftentimes. be good for like a uh, early ramped out, like Behemoth or something. I mean, I'm just really grasping at straws. Or like a frothing berserker that you don't really have another answer to. Uh, well, this is like a great that. start for Flory so far. Uh, it's like any other start you'd see normally, but. Uh, he gets the SI7 early, which means that this... Is he going to Corruption? Ooh. <laughs> the tech coming through. So it will die at the start of Chunsu's next turn. Still get three more damage. Man, the last time I saw Corruption in play, sometimes you'd silence your own minion because everyone ran so much silence, and you'd be like, Aha! Now it doesn't die. <laughs> well, Flurry's playing very fast. I hope he's not too frustrated after that loss. He just like immediately played it, but I mean, these, some of these turns are pretty self-explanatory, but he is like flying. These minions are like flying out of his hands right now. 
I mean, you guys watching at home know this is not, I mean, this is a spectator client, so there is like some delay involved. Like, you can feel the flight. Okay. Natsu is definitely in some trouble here. Down now to the best nine health. Actually, he'll probably save the dagger. He's actually going to trade. Doesn't want to lose too much momentum here. Patches will uh, actually trade nice. both. Now, yeah. now you can trade patches and the dagger to the other one. Very, very good player. He gets Van Cleef. Reno would be a great draw here, but I'm afraid not to be seen. He's gonna doomsayer with this, I guess. He could taunt it. Yeah, that's another option. Five zero with five, well, nine health in total, I guess. And Doomsayer would probably have been just eliminated, mm -hmm. or ignored rather. See, this is kind of, you know, we we talk about Van Cleef against Shaman. They don't run hexes, so it's like, you know, can work out, but. Already the Warlock is at turn 6, and yes, he only runs one Siphon Soul, but if you dump every single card you have into Van Cleef, it can be a bit risky. There's not many other plays. Like, he can coin a Psy Agent and then Van Cleef, and it's pretty big. He can still go for, like, a, a middle-range Van Cleef. I think it's 8-8. Eight, eight. The Succubus here is kind of funny because he never wants to play that because all these pieces are so essential, but he's getting close to an empty hand where he could actually have a 4-3 um, without discard. Alright, Jun stood looking for the Reno. Reno and the Voidwalker would be so amazing right now. Does not get it. Last Crystal Potion. That's going to at least remove the 8-8. Eight, eight. And there's not... We know there's not enough to finish after that. I might just do that in Doomsayer. Hellfire is not going to clear anything. It will do damage to him, so thoroughly useless in this case. He can Void Caller too to eat some damage. Yeah. With the Doomsayer. He's gonna draw. Can still play both. Needs to be careful not to destroy his crystal before playing the Void Caller. He lives. Being. Yeah. Oh, Void Caller sounds a lot more epic in Korean. I've never heard that one before. Yeah, it really does. Zap! Right off the top. And Flurry's quick plays grant him a quick win here in game number two. Or three, rather. There you go. Again, I mentioned the Warlock is going to be the toughest to win with, but he has three chances. No surprise the Rogue defeats it handily, especially without Reno. But he's got three chances to grab that Reno in these defensive setups. Yep, that he does. If he can get just a decent draw, you know, like Twilight Drake into having Reno or, you know, some other kind of taunts to just survive for a bit, maybe like a Shadow Bolt or something like that, he will definitely have a better chance. And Rogue, definitely one of the strongest decks we've seen here, so... As Flurry runs out of decks and gets down to his last decks, the Warlock will have a better and better chance, no doubt. I think Chun Tzu, though, feeling the pressure here, knowing that this is not going to be easy. This deck is an incredible ladder deck and a great deck where you could get a free win against any type of archetype, but it's tough. Yeah, definitely going to be tough for him. Let's see if he can close it out here in game number four against Flurry. Back to the warrior. See, as you mentioned earlier, this is the Draconoid Crusher variation. Considering dropping the Fierce Monkey for some more early pressure, does commit to it. We'll get the part time Buccaneer. Let's get the Walmart not, Buccaneer. Not part time today or yesterday. He's full time duty. Nearly every single game of Hearthstone that we played yesterday and today.
Extra credit, Buccaneer. <laughs> well, B team, Buccaneer. There's that corruption again. Probably just gonna mortal coil. Dirty Rat is in I hand too, Rat. and Dirty Rat can stop the taunt of the Twilight Guardians. Both of them. Now that uh, he's actually, ooh, this is a bit awkward. So he takes the hunter. Now that he has the Murgleton out, Dirty Rat becomes a good play. He doesn't know that, but oh, and he gets Reno too. I said, I mean, it's looking really good. When you look at the chances, like. One of the three games, he will get the Reno. I mean, mathematically, statistically, there's a very high chance that one of the three games, he will get it. Immediate Multiply the amount of times, you know, he has the opportunity to do it. Maybe he wanted to wait until after turn three in, in case a fierce monkey was here to go for the dirty rat. Not sure. I'm gonna use that mortal coil now. He's feeling a lot more safe now that he has the Reno. He can play a lot more flexibly. And of course, there's no way Flory can know if he has the Reno or not. He's buying turns towards six. It's a worthless turn, as we know. Reno will negate all damage. And Freshman Fender buys him some more time. He can trade with that with the Blackwing Corruptor. Next turn, he can also play Tharson. That will make the combo later on in the game with uh, Power Overwhelming uh, a real possibility. Definitely does not want to Reno here. Could just Mountain Giant. That's the way. That's a great draw. That's going to be so difficult to deal with. And if he's just if he just ignores it, Chun Tzu smiles and plays Reno. Yeah. I think that we might see that. We he could hide behind the taunt. Yeah. He could do seven damage and hide behind the taunt. Does he hide or does he go for Corcoran. as much damage as possible? Those oh, are the only he's two. He's gonna options. be so sad when he finds out. Watch yeah. Flurry's face. Watch the bottom left of your in screen. It, in his head fans. right now. In his head right now, he's like, "Okay, if he doesn't have Reno, I probably win. If he does, I lose." Watch the face. <laughs> yeah. He already knew. He's not even surprised. In fact, not happy about it though. This game is not over, but it is a huge swing in favor of Chun Tzu. That it is. He's going to get this Twilight Guardian out and begin to buff up the Frothing Berserker. But back up at 30 health now is Chun Tzu with the 4 6 on board and about six more cards than Flurry has. He can throw us in here. He's going to clear the board with this and. Uh, no, he doesn't even have um, the card that destroys your minion does health and does damage. Oh, he's just going to Shambler. Faceless Shambler, going to become an 8 10 Taunt. I actually never. I run this deck, I've played it a lot, I've never thought to use this interaction before. <laughs> and now that I see it, I'm like, oh my god. Well, like, yeah, that's pretty I'm such strong. A terrible player. <laughs> well, there's no pirate on board, but. Put, oh, there he comes one, okay. There we go, so he's gonna double buff and clear this, take eight damage, lose his Berserker. Doesn't really have another play though. He barely clears this, by the way. I mean, it is tight. <laughs> and Thorison can come out. He has Shadow Bolt, he has 28 health. He's gonna Thorison here. I'm hoping to just get rid of the um, first mate. Yeah. Make them some Australians real sad. <laughs> My first mate, he's going down. Down he goes. Gets an M2. So some extra power on board. Again, uh, Leroy coming in with Faceless could get that finishing power. He doesn't have power overwhelming anymore, but it's an important piece. Clearing this will be frustrating at best. In fact, he may ignore the cat. Yeah, with the Warlock up at 26 health, it's unfortunately, he's not really in range for you to begin going face yet. Soulfire, he runs that. Did not, as we say here, did not expect. Mm. Um, hmm. He's thinking about a way to make Hellfire work. 
He can. If he shadow uh, bolts the Guardian, runs the 2-3 into it, then runs his 1-1 one, one into the 3-3, three, three, then he can clear the entire board. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be... It wouldn't keep him with a healthy board, but it's insignificant because he has now currently seven cards to zero in hand. Kazakus just strong. This is like a, a really nice time to have Kazakus because it's like you're not under any danger. It's it's a three three. It's not the best body, but your your board position is pretty nice. He does have no cards in hand, the warrior, so you can easily play Dirty Rat for free. Look at that. The woes continue here for Flurry. That is Kirkron Elite. I think that might be game. It's going to be pretty close if he can somehow get some draws. But in hand, there is 13 damage. 13 damage, so it doesn't matter. I believe that's game. Yep. He's going to take even more damage here as he uses his weapon into the 2 3 Dirty Rat. And he's not going to be happy when he sees the follow up here, as it looks like Tunsu is going to be going on to the semifinals and Flurry will be going home. That is game over. He'll finish with Leroy Jenkins. A good finish, no doubt. That's how our group stage ends. Chun Tzu with the win. You get that Reno, you get the win against the aggro. And that's why he saves Warlock for last, knowing that one of the three games, it will work out. And it was game two of that uh, three-game exchange that did happen. Very imp impressive play from our top four BlizzCon world player in Chun Tzu. And that will be it for today. And one of our scariest players in this tournament, who I said by everyone in Group A and Pro Gamers, Flurry is out of the tournament. One of the big favorites to win it all. Yeah, it was funny to see him go. You know, the, the one of the series that he had was very, very close with Jungsu originally, but unfortunately just barely not able to squeak it out there. A couple of really great starts for Jungsu in this best of five where he was just easily just able to take quick win after quick win. And we saw the one quick win from Flurry on his Rogue, but it wasn't enough as he went into his Warrior. Yeah. Um, takeaways from tonight for me, really uh, think that Warrior, excuse me, Warlock and Druid are the weak links. Um, as we move into a best of fives and then a best of seven finals, we might see them in the best of seven. Um, but I think that we will see a reappearance of Priest tomorrow. I think that Paladin will come in in some form as well, potentially in some sort of aggro variation because yeah. it seems like these slow decks are really relying on Reno in every form, including the Freeze Mage, another inconsistent deck we've seen uh, in this tournament. It seems like really what you want to win with is you want your Shaman, your Rogue, your Warrior, and obviously because of the ban against you, you're looking for one more deck. And I don't know if the Warlock and the Druid decks are going to be consistent enough. I think so, I think whoever maybe brings tomorrow a new deck is going to be the one who wins the tournament. Could be. Could be. You know, or maybe someone finds a way to make Priest work, you know, or the Freeze Mage if they feel like that's strong enough. Dahyani brings a Hunter in like he promised. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> that would be insane. Uh, don't think that's going to happen. I don't predict it to happen. Maybe in the best of seven where he's forced to bring seven decks, I guess. We might see it in there. We might self-ban it. Uh, not 100% sure about that. Might take all other seven classes that aren't Hunter instead. I really do feel like when you look at uh, Rogue, Shaman, Warrior, and then you take those are the top three. Then you have the two remaining decks in the Warlock. Um, and of course the Druid. I think whoever can find something, the sixth deck beyond all this, wins the tournament. Yeah, very true, guys. A short one minute break. We'll be right back. <laughs>